what is going on guys welcome back to the channel and i appreciate you being here today i am back with another destiny 2 update video and i'm going to fill you in on all the changes coming with their 1.1.2 update the one about armor masterwork so let's get into it now this will come later on today or you probably already have got it uh, by the time you've watched this video but yeah nonetheless it's the 1.1.2 update for destiny 2 so let's go armor masterworks a legendary armor now has a chance to drop as a masterwork any non masterwork armor may be upgraded to masterwork for five masterwork cores and 20 legendary shards upgrading to masterwork may rework the stat of the armor masterwork armor grants three percent damage resistance while players are in a super state for each masterwork armor piece equipped masterwork armor can have a different stat package heavy light restorative from the base armor piece players may rework masterwork armor to randomly assign one of the three base packages to the armor allowing players to reroll the stat packages on their armor piece by piece your working masterwork armor requires one masterwork core and 10 legendary shards. Like weapons, armor masterworks have a higher drop rate from trials of nine and raid activities. Benedict9914 now has a rotating stock of armor and weapons available each week. To unlock these items for purchase, players must complete the corresponding activity that week. Raid encounters drop at least one armor or weapon item. Note, the Castellum and Reactor Escape Encounters drop one Legendary Engram per week. Completing a Prestige version of a Raid Encounter prior to normal difficulty will drop both Prestige and Normal Rewards while also locking the weekly rewards for each activity. The last encounter of Raid Activities has a chance to drop a new Exotic Ghost exclusive to the Leviathan. Raid Armor has unique mods that only function within the Leviathan. Raid mods can be swapped at will for the cost of one raid token. Existing raid armor already held in inventory will automatically have the option to equip mods. All raid encounters now have a chance to grant an exotic reward. And as we found out from the weekly update, these exotic rewards that do drop uh, won't drop as engrams, so you don't have to go back to the crypto to decrypt them. They will drop as an exotic weapon or armor piece, which you can apply straight away. But some many great changes here already to speak about. I like the idea of being able to re-roll your raid uh, armor mods at the cost of one raid token. That's pretty cool. And I love the idea of that new exotic ghost exclusive to the Leviathan. Great, great, great additions. Moving on to the sandbox and the Prometheus lens. Flame refraction perk now generates ammo instead of pulling from reserves and increased base damage. Lucky pants. Fixed an issue where the illegally modded holster perk would provide infinite ammo. Ophidian's aspects. Fixed an issue where the Cobra Totemic perk did not function properly when using weapons with the Quick Draw perk. I am alive. Revive perks on the Eater of Wars grenade launcher to include a second trait perk, Moving Target. Remove the Augmented Drum and High Velocity Rounds perks. Fixed an issue where grenade projectiles could remain indefinitely after being hit by Telesto in the Crucible. So we're going to move on to activities. Fixed an issue where warp gates did not always function when players were completing Heroic Mercury Adventures. Revise the description for the Heroic Adventure Depowered modifier to correctly state that grenade damage is decreased when the modifier is active. Revise the description of Heroic Mercury Adventures to properly state availability. Players may play up to three Heroic Mercury Adventures on a given day. Each Heroic Adventure may be played once per twice weekly reset. Heroic Adventures are no longer automatically selected at weekly reset. Mercury Challenges are now available during Adventures. Fixed an issue where new characters created after the release of Curse of Osiris were not receiving the Flashpoint milestone. Fixed an issue where scannables for faction rallies were not properly appearing during faction rally events. Trials of Nine now properly shows requirements when the featured map requires Curse of Osiris ownership. Revived the Lost Sector reward throttle from 10 minutes to 5 minutes. Fixed an issue where players could no longer progress during the final encounter in the Tree of Probability Strike. Moving on to UI. Fixed an issue where I could would display a waypoint in error. Oh, that was so damn annoying. I'm glad it's been resolved. Players in social spaces receive a notification when their postmaster lost and found is full. 
Chess waypoints now properly appear when using scout reports on Mercury. Colorblind settings now apply to elements of the Gauntlet encounter in the Leviathan Raid. Armor offered by Brother Vance now displays mod slots when previewed in the vendor inventory. Fixed an issue where players would see incorrect level up UI when leveling up alternate characters from levels 21 through to 25. Auto rifles now correctly display perks when players are previewing weapons within the vault. Adjusted the display order of gear sockets, mods, shaders, etc. in the item details screen to be more consistent. Increase the dismantle timer for masterwork cores. Masterwork weapons and armor now display a gold border when being viewed in the Postmaster Lost and Found. Crucible players will be properly notified when power ammo is acquired from the cave area on Radiant Cliffs. Moving on to rewards, reduce the amount of XP required to earn an illuminated engram from 160k to 120k, great great addition. The crossroads emblem correctly displays within collections for players who have earned the emblem. Character models no longer flinch when spawning into social spaces with spawn effects equipped. Update the names of spawn effects to properly reflect their in-game appearance. The gold spotlight effect is now yellow spotlight effect. The blue class sigil effect is now the purple class sigil effect. The new monarchy helmet ornament icon now displays the correct helmet. The new monarchy cloak now displays the correct imagery for female hunters. Fixed an issue where the future world cult gauntlets would display floating geometry. Gunsmith engrams correctly grant weapon foundry shaders once again. Fixed an issue where three coins was not increasing chances of exotic rewards when players were completing public events on Mercury. Heroic Strike completions now have a greater chance of granting exotic rewards. Fixed an issue where the Curse of Osso Strikes were not properly granting clan engrams when featured as a Nightfall activity. R Site 99 will now offer Gunsmith engrams to players who have reached level 20 but have not yet completed the Red War campaign. Good to see that they've actually fixed your coins because there was definitely an issue with getting exotics when using them, there's no doubt about it. I did a test and there was just no change, it was ridiculous so I'm glad to see a fix. And we're going to move on to Misk which is the last category they actually cover within this update. Gleaming Boon on the Vanguard price reduced from 350 to 250 Bright Dust. The gleaming boon of the Crucible price reduced from 750 to 600 Bright Dust. Fixed an issue where challenges were not appearing within Quick Play. Fixed an issue where Masterwork Cores and Mod Components were not being forwarded to the Postmaster Lost and Found. Fixed an issue where Destiny 2 could crash when players were changing emotes quickly. Fixed an issue where players could not interact with vendors after fast travelling to a social space. Fixed an issue where the belt on the Lucky Raspberry was not properly attached to the character model. Fixed an issue where some spiral contrails could obstruct player view. Fixed an issue where the get up and sneaky emotes could not be in the player imagery at the same time. Cade now properly acknowledges player accomplishments during Mercury Flashpoint weeks when granting the Flashpoint engram rather than asking the player about the weather on the IO. And fixed an issue where Savala would display the wrong text when granting players rewards from the Heroic Strike milestone. So quite a few changes come with a 1.1.2 update patch which like I said you should be uh, able to download pretty soon or if you're watching this probably the day after I've posted it you've probably already got it and these are the changes that come with that patch. But guys I hope you enjoyed the video if you did leave a like it really does help me out. Tell me what you think about some of the changes you've seen and witnessed today and hopefully people I will see you on that next one. Get it right.